Hello, I'm Mike Walker. Thanks for joining me here at Open Innovation Labs. In this demo, we'll showcase our automated framework for doing container-based continuous integration and continuous delivery. I'll show you how this framework allows for the following key capabilities. One, we can use automation to very rapidly deploy new features to a running application. Two, we can automatically ensure the code we deploy meets our quality and testing standards. Three, we can rest assured that the code will work the same way in every environment. So at the conclusion of part one of our demo, we designed a push button infrastructure, and that is what we're looking at here with all of the layers, application development, DevOps tools, container platform, and hosting infrastructure. So now that it's designed, let's go ahead and kick off the automation behind the scenes driven by Ansible to build out our environment. So I'll begin by clicking on the build button. This sends a set of parameters from this web page to a simple microservice that converts the URL to JSON and finally invokes Ansible Towers API to kick off an automation playbook. The important takeaway here is that the stack we designed in the web interface is actually used to kick off a wide set of automation tasks, all managed in Ansible Tower. Tower is the way we manage all the automation capabilities of our push button infrastructure in one place, and it provides APIs for us to integrate external tools like the web interface. So let's have a look at a job run. The Ansible playbooks contain the automation tasks in a clear, easy to read language. At Labs, we found that developers and operators alike can each pick up Ansible quickly, and we find it's a really easy and awesome way to automate everything we do across the board. So in this case, we've kicked off a job run here that executes a number of plays to automate the build out of a delivery pipeline to support development of a new feature for an application, as well as a full containerized build and deploy of the application itself to prime the pipeline. So looking at our overview diagram, this shows us what the automation plays will set up. First, Ansible configures OpenShift to provide projects for dev, test, and UAT, according to our best practices. Then it creates a Jenkins file to define a delivery pipeline up here that mirrors each of those project stages. Next, it pulls down some Node.js code, in this case, from a GitHub repo that I've previously specified as a parameter to Ansible. It will build it, test it, and use OpenShift's source to image tool to create a Docker image. The Jenkins pipeline we created then deploys the image into each OpenShift project stage. So to summarize, when the automation is completed, we've spun up a new delivery pipeline in Jenkins, which is connected with a feature branch in GitHub to build our code each time a pull request occurs. And we have a fully deployed application on each stage of that pipeline. Okay, so let's have a look at the OpenShift projects that were automatically generated here. As you can see, we've created one project for each stage of the pipeline, which is a best practice. So digging into the dev stage of the pipeline, we can see that our Ansible playbook has already built and deployed the application images. In this case, we're running two different images as part of one application. The application we've chosen is Hexboard demo from the Red Hat Summit 2015 keynote presentation. Now, OpenShift has been configured to provide a wide variety of images and templates and instant applications for us to jumpstart additional development work. So it's very easy as a developer to head here for self-service access to a nice set of technologies for building applications. And as an operations manager, I can rest assured since these images are certified, secured, and supported by Red Hat. So let's go back and take a look at the application itself. OpenShift makes this very easy, so we'll click on this URL and we arrive at the application front end. The app uses hexagons as a visualization to represent one Kubernetes pod in a cluster. Each pod can run one instance of the backing application. The blue pods are currently available but unused, and the pods that are filled in, in this case with the Shadowman logo, are active and responding. All of these components, all the way up to the containerized application running in a multi-stage environment, have all been built from the ground up automatically using code we provided at Labs. In this case, we're running on AWS for our hosting infrastructure, but it could just as easily be OpenStack or Rev or bare metal or even VMware. Okay, so all this automation is great, but how does it allow the delivery of new features more quickly? One of the measures of successful DevOps environments is cycle time, the amount of time it takes to get a single changed line of code all the way out to production. This is a measure of time to market. So let's put our developer hats on and make a change to this application. In this case, I'd like to change the graphic used as the backdrop for the hex board. So as a developer, I'm going to overwrite the current Shadowman logo here with a new one that I pulled down, which shows the OpenShift logo instead. So I have a feature branch here that 
was automatically created for me by the Labs Ansible script. So I'll go ahead and commit my change to that branch and then go back to my work, knowing that the pipeline automation will take it from here and send my change on its way down the delivery pipeline. For the curious or impatient types out there, we can have a look at the pipeline itself to see what happens next. Here we see that our webhook has automatically detected a change in the feature branch, which has kicked off a new pipeline from a Hexboard application. It has pulled down the latest code, successfully built it, successfully passed tests, and now is wrapping it all up in a Docker image that I can check into a registry and promote to a shared dev environment, which runs on OpenShift. An important takeaway here is that I build my code only once I create an image, and from this point onward, that image is deployed to whatever environments are deemed suitable. In this way, I'm wrapping up my code, my dependencies, and my configuration into a container image that is immutable. This allows me to drastically reduce manual error and allows me to rest assured that my code will run the same way in production as it did on my laptop when I built it the first time. Okay, the image deployment has just completed, so I'll switch over to my OpenShift environment in dev to see the results. Now, OpenShift gives me rolling deployment features that allows me to perform readiness checks against the application before scaling down the old components. This is done automatically. The end result is that users see no downtime. So let's check out my changes. And I like what I see here. The graphic has been updated as expected. And uh, just for fun, I can go ahead and scale up the number of running pods in my environment. And one of the side benefits of that is I will get to see uh, the full graphic in effect in my hex board diagram, showing me that I'm making use of all the pods in my cluster. Putting my release manager hat on, rather than fully automating a deployment all the way to production, I may want to restrict the automatic promotion of this code into an integrated test or UAT environment so that only release managers can perform the deployment. This introduces the human element. It's a matter of preference, but our default pipeline provides for this manual step, so let's go ahead and promote this code to the next stages of the pipeline. So to summarize, in this demo, you've seen how we use automation to build delivery pipelines for each project at labs in a programmatic way, and seen how we use that pipeline to fully automate the build, test, and deploy process for container-based applications, which allows us to release features as rapidly as we want and ensure high code quality and consistency of our solution. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to sharing more updates from Open Innovation Labs with you soon.